Hi, uh, my name is Jeff Carpenter. I'm going to be talking about web payments, turbocharging mobile commerce through native browser APIs. Uh, just a tiny bit about me. Uh, I'm Jeff Carpenter. I'm a software engineer. Uh, I just joined Google Chrome, um, so don't ask me any like hard questions. Uh, and note, I'm not speaking on behalf of Google. Um, I got interested in payments because I spent the last two years at Braintree Payments, uh, which was awesome. Uh, and yeah, so let's begin by taking a journey, a mobile commerce journey. Uh, we are this pug that is riding on top of this turtle. Um, and we are searching on the internet uh, for this product that we've always wanted, the perfect product, and we've finally found it. So now we want to buy this product, um, and we're using our mobile phone, uh, and we run into this. Uh, <laughs> and this is actually just one checkout, and I split it up into three so you can see how long it is. Um, and I think we've all had like probably a similar experience where uh, we've just run into like a really terrible, treacherous checkout, um, and it is convinced us not to actually check out, and we just go somewhere else. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, uh, most of us are engineers. Let's fix it. Let's build our own uh, payment form. And th I think all of us could probably do a better job than that. Uh, so uh, we can start with, can everybody see that? Uh, we'll start with just like a really basic form uh, with a number and expiration input and submit like the most basic you can get. Um, but like obviously we're not going to be storing the credit cards on our servers, so we have to add like the gateway JavaScript um, to be PCI compliant. Um, and then uh, like we want to validate the input before it goes to the server. Um, we want to be nice to our, our customers, so we want to add the credit card validator JS. Um, and then a lot of people like paying with stuff other, uh, payment methods other than credit cards, so we can add uh, other payment methods that people like paying with. Um, and so you can sort of see where this is going. Um, everybody does this, and the problem is that everybody everybody does this in sort of like a very a different way. Um, and the biggest problem is that everybody does this in a different way on mobile. Um, and to make this problem even worse, uh, more users are buying on mobile. Um, it's projected that mobile e-commerce will eclipse desktop, desktop commerce. But currently, mobile converts really poorly. Um, it's about 66% fewer conversions uh, than on desktop. Uh, and so if I had to like put together a list of what the, oh, yes, <laughs> check out a mobile web has a UX problem, as we, as we are seeing. Um, if I had to put, a, put together a list of what the problems are, um, one is small screen size, the other is entering the card information, and the biggest problem is that you have to enter it every single time. Um, and I can never remember my credit card number. Um, it's it, like, and I always have to look it up. Um, and then heterogeneity, uh, the fact that everybody's building their own checkout and you have to get used to different checkouts um, every time you check out. Um, so I'm not a hardware engineer, so I can't really do much about the first one, um, but I think we can do something about the, the, the last two. Um, so one thing is that uh, if you use like autocomplete in browsers, uh, the browser already has the ability to store your credit card. Um, so why can't we use the card that the browser already has uh, and expose that via JavaScript? And that, that's sort of what the, the genesis of native, native payment APIs is, um, using the, the credit card that you already have in the browser for, for the web. Um, and I'm really excited about this because I can't remember my credit card and I don't like entering it a thousand times. Um, and I'm also, I'm even more excited about this uh, because I hate building checkout forms and if I never have to build a checkout form again, uh, I would be very happy. <laughs> so 2016 is sort of the year of the, the web payment API. Um, at Google I.O., Google introduced uh, the payment request API, uh, which is an open source um, W3C standard that they're, uh, they're pushing through forward. Um, and then Safari at WWDC introduced Apple Pay on the web. Um, in this presentation, I'll like sort of uh, gloss over both of those uh, really briefly and, and try to give you um, uh, the, the basics of both um, and then look at the two uh, and how it might play out in the timeline. Um, cool, so let's do payment request first. So the basics of payment request is that you call this JavaScript API and it presents this native dialogue with um, the, the payment 
uh, the, the price, the shipping, uh, and the payment method, and the user can select their different payment methods. Um, I'm sorry I didn't get like a video or anything, or, or like a, a live demo. Um, I have my, my Nexus 6P with me. If you wanna like try it out later, um, just find me. Uh, so yeah, this is sort of what we're, we're going for. Um, so what you, uh, what you need for payment requests is two objects. One, the first one is the supported payment instruments. Um, and right now, uh, it's just credit cards, so you would put the payment method identifiers in there. Uh, this GIF on the right is actually a demo of Android Pay. I'm sorry, I couldn't find a GIF of the credit card flow, but it is very similar. Uh, and the second object that you need is the payment method details. It's all the other stuff, um, like the total and all the items. You can itemize your transaction. And so when you, put, when you give those two objects to payment request and you call show, that's what causes that, that native dialogue to pop up um, and the user can uh, check, uh, choose their, their shipping method and their payment method. Um, and then uh, when the user presses pay, that's when it resolves this promise and calls um, this callback that you gave to then. The instrument response um, is this object that contains uh, one thing of which is the details. And the details is the raw credit card, um, which is this object. Um, so just like the raw credit card information and going back, um, basically when you when the c consumer presses that button uh, pay, it'll start this spinner, um, and then the JavaScript will basically wait for you to resolve that promise or not to resolve the promise, but to call this instrument response dot complete, um, and then it will shut the it will close the the dialog. Cool. Um, so. In Chrome 53, which is out right now, if you have an Android, it is available. There are demos that you can go do uh, with all sorts of different options uh, at this link. Um, I will somehow distribute the link for this presentation so you don't have to copy this all down. Um, and then there's an integration guide down there. Cool, um, so as for a timeline, um, Chrome 53, it's out right now for raw credit card transactions. Um, and then Android Pay, in the Google I.O. talk, they said Android Pay would be late 2016, um, and then early 2017 for third-party apps. Um, and by apps, they mean um, like uh, different payment instruments. So for instance, like PayPal could build one. Uh, but obviously not all of us use Chrome. Uh, so when will payment requests be in all the browsers? Uh, Firefox uh, is, as far as I know, in development for payment request. Uh, as is Edge, um, and then Safari is uh, uh, doing Apple Pay. <laughs> so um, actually, the, the day they announced Apple Pay on the web, um, they sent a, a message to the, the payment request mailing list, uh, the, the W3C like spec mailing list, and they, were, they said that, um, yes, we're like introducing Apple Pay on the web, and it has this new API, but we do want to eventually merge this API with payment request. Um, so maybe a couple years down the road, payment request will be the only API that you have to use. Um, but uh, let's talk about uh, Apple Pay and Safari. Cool. So Apple Pay and Safari, the first thing you need to know is that you need a new certificate. If you're doing Apple Pay now, you know that there's one certificate needed, but you need this shiny new certificate um, for processing payments on the web. Um, and that is because, uh, I, yeah, I can <laughs> go to this now. Um, that's because Apple wants to be able to uh, cut off payments for merchants if they start seeing fraudulent transactions. Um, so if you're accepting Apple Pay on the web, you need to um, start communicating with Apple um, from your server to their server. Um, and Tom Dale had an awesome uh, like GitHub repository that sort of demonstrated, he, he reverse engineered the, AP, the API that um, Apple servers talk um, in order to accept Apple Pay on the web. Um, and this is a great example of like what you will need to do if you want to accept Apple Pay in Safari. Before you accept Apple Pay, you need to call this uh, this Apple Pay session can make payments with active card method. Um, and that checks whether the uh, customer's device can accept Apple Pay and whether they have uh, like an active card um, that they can pay with. Um, and so then if you check that method, uh, you can show the Apple Pay buttons if it returns true. And then you just define one object to give the Apple Pay all the payment information in here, all the card networks that you accept. Uh, and when the, when the customer clicks on the button, um, you call a new Apple Pay session and give them your options. 
and that pops up the, the dialog on desktop uh, that prompts you to, to authorize on your phone. And this is, uh, yeah, this is from the WWDC talk. But um, yeah, once you authorize on your phone, it'll go back uh, and um, resolve the Apple Pay session. Um, one thing you, that you do have to do, this is where the, the your server to Apple server communication comes in. Um, once you call this new Apple Pay session, um, Apple will fire this callback session dot on validate merchant, and it'll give you this event with uh, event dot validation URL, and that's the URL that you need to hit using your own uh, Apple Pay merchant certificate um, on Apple servers uh, in order to let the transaction go through. Cool. Uh, raise your hand if you love PCI compliance. Great. Uh, okay, so I tried to make a really uneducated guess of what the PCI compliance level. Actually, sorry, does everybody know what an SAQA or an SAQ is? Uh, raise your hand if you are familiar with SAQs. <laughs> okay, so uh, I, I'm probably not going to do a very good job of explaining this, but an SAQ, um, if you're under, I think, something like one or six million transactions a year, um, in order to achieve PCI compliance, you don't need to have somebody come on site and do an audit. An audit. You can just submit uh, this thing called a uh, self-assessment questionnaire. Uh, and that uh, basically, you're, you're, attesting, uh, <laughs> you're attesting that your company is following all these guidelines uh, of PCI compliance. Um, so there are a bunch of different levels of uh, self-security. Uh, uh, I forgot what it stands for, actually. <laughs> Um, so th there was a bunch of different different levels. The top level of which is SAQA, um, which is the easiest level to attain, which is uh, like the most secure level. So if you're if you're not exposing yourself to a, to much PCI risk at all, then you can do SAQA. Uh, one step down from that is SAQA EP, um, and that's for so for instance, SAQA is um, if no payment information is hitting your uh, your origin. So like if your JavaScript never can have access to a credit card. SAQAEP is, yeah, if your JavaScript hands a, handles a credit card, you have to fill out this a little bit more lengthy form. Um, it's a little bit heavier on the compliance side. Uh, if you're like a payment gateway, you have to do SAQD. Um, or if you're above a certain number of transactions, you just can't fill out a, a self-assessment questionnaire at all. <laughs> um, so anyway. Uh, the raw payment request, and even if gateways uh, try to support this, I think they will not be able to achieve the highest level of, of or the easiest level of PCI compliance um, because raw payment information is flowing through your, your origin. Um, once Android Pay and Apple Pay come out um, and are ready for production, then I think they, they will allow you to achieve SAQA. Um, yeah, there's, there's this one spec called feature policy, uh, which might be able to would, might be able to enable you to achieve SAQA. Um, it's, it basically allows you to uh, authorize an iframe to initiate the payment request. Right now, the payment request has to come from the top level um, uh, of your domain. You can't like have it initiated from, by an iframe, uh, but this spec would allow you to do that. Um, so if you, if you really want to implement payment requests and you want to still be SAQA, keep your eyes on the spec. Cool, uh, and then more more uneducated guesses for me. I think a realistic timeline of when you can start seeing this stuff in production is probably around mid to late 2017, given all the browser timelines. Uh, yeah. Cool. Uh, now I want to talk sort of about uh, who would benefit from this in the value chain or who wouldn't benefit from this in the value chain. And I think pretty much everybody in the payments process uh, it would benefit from this. I think it's a win-win. Um, so merchants, uh, they get potentially more card volume. Uh, one downside, though, is that, yes, th this definitely requires engineering resources to implement. Um, you will have to, if you're a merchant, you will have to uh, uh, edit your checkout flow. Uh, payment gateways, uh, yes, potentially more card volume as well. Um, payment gateways pro will probably have to do the most legwork uh, for payment request and Apple Pay. Um, so yeah. And then uh, acquiring banks and card networks, pretty much have no downsides for this. Uh, the rails don't change at all, uh, and they can only benefit. Uh, there's not all winners, though. Uh, JavaScript library authors um, probably will see less usage from their libraries, because uh, payments will be no longer hand handled in JavaScript. Um, and 
PayPal is a big question uh, when this comes up because it's always been sort of the, the easier, safer way. Like you just press a button and, and you do a transaction. Um, but if you can, if, if credit cards become just as easy as paying with PayPal, is that a threat to one of PayPal's value props? Um, that I'll, I'll leave that as a question to the reader. Um, and also, uh, as an aside, there actually is a, a musical artist called DJ PayPal. Um, so I encourage you to check them out. Uh, so W3 specs that are coming out, uh, payment request API is the, the main one, and then there's a couple like sub specs, like payment method ident identifiers, which defines the schema of that credit card object you saw. Um, and then basic card payment, oh, that's the basic card payment, and the payment method identifiers are the, just the individual strings. Um, and they have a great like getting started page at that link, um, if you wanna check it out. Uh, and here are more links, <laughs> if you wanted more links. Um, there's a, they have a good explanation of the rationale behind web payments, probably a better explanation than I could do. And then the two um, screenshots that you saw were from these two videos of Google and Apple's introductions of these web payment technologies. Cool, um, and I just wanna thank Elliot Lee and Zach Koch uh, who helped me develop this talk, uh, and thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.